The Amazon, a world of superlatives. The biggest river, the greatest rainforest, and the most exotic wildlife destination on the planet. It's estimated that half of the world's animal species live here. From the beautiful to the weird, the colorful to the cryptic, the iconic to the downright mysterious. So where do you start your quest for beasts? Let us be your guide as we navigate the Amazon and show you our 10 favorite wildlife greats. The Amazon, a river, a basin, and a rainforest. The river stretches over 6,000 kilometers from the Andes in Peru to the Atlantic Ocean. By volume, it's the biggest river in the world. The river runs through rainforest for almost half its length. Rainforest so vast, it could swallow the whole of Western Europe. This is the ultimate rainforest and for many travelers, the ultimate wildlife destination. We asked Amazon experts which creatures to go and see, and this is their guide to the animal lovers most wanted. Be prepared for the spectacular and surprising as we take you on a journey to see the Amazon's wildlife greats. Heading the show is a gremlin with a whole lot of family appeal. Marmosets and their close cousins, the tamarins, have some of the most endearing faces in the forest. There are more than 20 different species with names to match. Spix's black mantle tamarin, the pied tamarin, the red-bellied mustache tamarin, the Midas tamarin, and the pygmy marmoset so tiny it fits in the palm of your hand. This is a family of golden white tasseled ear marmosets and they live in groups of up to 15. Very unusually for primates, only the dominant female breeds. The rest of the family, even the males, help bring up the young. Hold up in a tree, the mother marmosets in labor. With his mate safe inside the nest, the dominant male checks for danger outside. There's trouble on the forest floor. It's a boa constrictor, and it can taste the scent of tiny primates. A call from the male causes the marmosets to scatter. But one of the family has not been fast enough. Fortunately, the mother marmoset is still safe inside the tree. She gives birth to twins, the most usual litter size. Acting as his partner's midwife, the male cuts the umbilical cord. When the group leave the nest, the female's got her hands full. But father gets back to his day job. He scent marks the branches to mark out their territory. The youngsters soon take an interest in food. If they're too young to catch it themselves, begging does the trick. When that stops working, stealing is another option. Eventually, they learn to forage for themselves. Fruits are the main part of the diet and are tackled by stripping the flesh and discarding the hard seeds inside.
Small animals like snakes are also on the menu. The head's bitten off very carefully. And the youngsters soon get to know there's meat on offer. It's not easy to tell the difference between marmosets and tamarins. But look at their mouths. Tamarins' jaws are more rounded, and their canines stick out. They're larger than marmosets and live in smaller families. Marmosets like to include tree gum in their diet, whereas tamarins tend to stick to fruit. Don't get marmosets and tamarins confused with these little guys, squirrel monkeys. They're small too, but they belong to another group of primates. We'll see them later in the show. Monkeys live in trees, don't they? Not always. Hiding under the surface is another monkey, the water monkey. Except this monkey is a fish. The arowana or water monkey is our next wildlife great because of a surprising talent. When floodwaters are high, it's tempted by insects and spiders. But it doesn't wait for them to fall in. Arowanas have been measured jumping three feet or a meter clear of the surface. Hinging open and shut in a split second, the arowana's jaws make a deadly trapdoor. But this Amazon predator isn't always such a mouthy brute. These little fish aren't its supper, they're its offspring. The gaping jaws become a safe haven. The signal to get on board is a subtle one. At the sight of danger like this giant piruruku, father wafts his barbels. As a further safety net in the big world, baby arowana carry a yolk sac. This keeps them nourished until they're ready to feed themselves. Little fish around here need all the protection they can get. You may recognize these tetra. That's because they're favorites in fish tanks all around the world. Pretty as they are, they make a great snack food. And these little fish are in big trouble. The leaf fish is a master of camouflage and subtle maneuvers. Tiny pectoral fins glided into position without blowing its cover, whilst the white furry lure at the end of its jaw catches the eye of potential prey. The tiny tetra are unaware of the danger until the leaf sucks them in. Tetra are also in danger from aerial predators. The green kingfisher picks a favorite perch to scan the surface. For a successful catch, it needs speed. It pins its wings back to accelerate and opens them as it reaches the water for stability and a quick exit. Fish only see the bird when it breaks the surface, so they have a split second to react. 
Tetra maximize the chance of escape by using pressure sensors that run down the length of their body. When the sensors are triggered, the Tetra is thrown sideways. Not very far, but it could be just enough. When the arowana leaps, it leaps alone. But the hatchet fish has company. These hatchets are on the run. The tacannery is hot on their heels and is about to make a deadly lunge. It seems there's no escape for the hatchets until they explode into the air. Their wing-like pectoral fins help them take off, and the axe-like keel on their body allows them to slice upwards through the water and cut back through without a belly flop. Leaping gives the hatchet fish the perfect get out. But the arowana is still our top flight Amazon fish. Graceful in the water and in the air, which is something you just can't say about the sloth. The sloth may hang like a moldy old carpet bag from a tree and share its name with a deadly sin, but that doesn't stop visitors to the Amazon loving this slow coach. That hasn't always been the case. One of the first Spanish explorers said he'd never seen an uglier or more useless animal. At least that stopped fur trappers turning it into coats like many of the other animals here. A sloth's coat is green because it's full of moss and algae. That doesn't seem to bother this moth. It makes its home here. Sloths are only found in the forests of Central and South America. There are three-toed sloths and two-toed sloths. But beware, these names are confusing. Don't look at the toes, look at the fingers. Every sloth has three digits on its back feet. But only the two-toed sloth has two digits, not three, on its front feet. They move three times slower than you'd walk. This apparent indolence is deceptive. In fact, they're very successful herbivores. If all the mammals in the Amazon were weighed together, two-thirds of that weight would be pure sloth. That's because sloths are incredibly common. But what is it about life in the slow lane that makes them so abundant? The answer's extreme specialization. Sloths are plant processing machines. Their stomachs are multi-chambered and full of leaf digesting bacteria. When stuffed full, the belly is more than a third of the total body weight. Meals stay in the stomach for up to a month before moving further down the gut. Slow processing goes with a slow metabolism and a low body temperature. Energy efficiency is the sloth's secret weapon. Toilet stops are once a week for the sloth. And tonight's the night for this one. It comes down from the tree for the occasion. It's also a night out for the resident moth. Sloth dung is where it lays its eggs and where its larvae will develop. Coming down from the tree obviously benefits the moth, but why does a sloth bother? Maybe the tree gets a concentrated shot of fertilizer, so the sloth will be rewarded with more leaves. Or perhaps it's just a gravity thing. 
If it stayed hanging upside down, things could get messy. The sloth also comes down to reach trees it can't get to by climbing. But it tries to avoid open ground. Those legs were meant for hanging, not walking. But when the Amazon's waters flood into the forest, the comical carpet bag suddenly becomes graceful. Not such a sloth, after all. What would you do if you got lost in the Amazon? Here are five top survival tips to help you out. Water. Drink more than you think you need. And remember, boil it first. Then use it as you please. When it's hot in the Amazon, it's really hot. Don't fight the heat. Take a siesta when and where you can. Food. You may have to change your taste to survive. We recommend lightly grilled tarantula. Mosquitoes. No mosquito net, no problem. A smoky fire will help you stay bite free. Rivers. All major settlements in the Amazon are built around the river. So follow a waterway downstream until you hit the main river and hopefully civilization. On your way, you may even come across the strangest dolphin on earth. Those lucky enough to get a glimpse of the Butu are transported into a world of myth and legend. Amazon folklore tells how these dolphins transform themselves into handsome young men who seduce unmarried girls. These beguiling beasts can also become alluring maidens who capture men's hearts and lead them away never to be seen again. Although sometimes called pink river dolphins, the Butu can also be white, gray, or pale blue. The color seems to depend on the clarity of the water. Muddy water tends to have pink dolphins, and clear water more gray. Compared with marine dolphins, the Butus look surreal. Their neck is extremely flexible, so they move their head in all directions. A real advantage in the underwater maze of the flooded forest. They have a large bulge on their head, the melon, for echolocation. They use it to produce clicks that radiate from the head and bounce off obstacles in the water and their food. Some experts believe the clicks stun the prey, making the catch more efficient. No wonder echolocation is crucial for these mammals. The Amazon is often murky with silt and plant tannins. Vision is of limited use, as the beady eyes of the Butu testify.
The Butu's got different fins, too. They lack the trademark dorsal fin of porpoising dolphins. Because they don't require such speed, that fin's limited to a humped ridge down their back. Their flippers are flat and triangular, so the Butu can glide close to the bottom of the river where food is abundant. It can also paddle these fins in opposite directions, using them like an oarsman turning a boat in a tight spot. At up to two and a half meters, or eight feet, this is a big dolphin to turn. Piranhas are a favorite food. We may fear them for their ferocious bite, but the Butus are so deft at catching them that they turn it into a game. Like other big-brained mammals, play seems important to Butus. They use games to pass skills onto their young. Their big brain also helps them find food in this complex, ever-changing river. Butus are not the only dolphins the locals see here. The Takushi lives where the river's deeper and looks much more like an ocean dolphin than the Butu. There's also a vegetarian in the river, the manatee. This is the Amazon's largest aquatic mammal. At nearly three meters or nine feet long, munching weeds all day requires little brain power. And this, along with a docile nature, makes it an easy target for a harpoon. Manatee meat is highly prized. Where humans fish, Butus are always in danger of getting caught in their nets. But fortunately, they aren't hunted for meat. They're considered too human-like. Eat one of these, and you might be eating a lost soul. The Amazon, a sea of green, and then a flash of color. Get ready to feast your eyes. The Amazon has the most colorful birds in the world. Even if you're not into birds, you can't fail to be into macaws. They're the most colorful air show on Earth. Macaws belong to the parrot family, and here the cast list is second to none. Sapphire rumped parrotlets, hyacinth macaws, red-bellied macaws, and maroon-tailed parakeets. Macaws, like all parrots, often mate for life. These scarlet macaws reinforce their bonds with daily bill touching and preening. Each partner is highly possessive of its mate. When these birds are kept as pets, this trait can cause problems. Parrots often won't tolerate an owner's spouse, and they can fly into a jealous rage or a sulk. After a lengthy courtship, the couple must find a place to raise their family. These blue and yellow macaws are making use of a broken palm tree. Raising chicks is a long-term project. The hatchlings stay with their parents for up to two years, and the pair won't raise any more chicks until they're gone. That's a lot of foraging trips for the grown-ups. Their beaks are hooked to tear into tough fruits and seeds that other animals can't tackle. Trees don't fruit all at once. Only two or three might be fruiting in a square mile. It's vital the macaws know where these are, and this may explain why these birds are so intelligent. They need to keep a mental map of where to find the next meal. 
In captivity, their intelligence can also cause problems. They get bored. If they don't have enough room to play, they'll tear their feathers out. For these blue and yellow macaw chicks, boredom won't be an issue. They have an endless rainforest to explore as they join the Amazon's other great parrots in flight. So far, we featured five wildlife greats. We've seen the twin fortunes of the marmosets. Made a splash with the arowana, hung out with that delightful leaf-munching old carpet bag, the sloth, entered the mysterious world of the Butu dolphin, and been dazzled by macaws, the brightest sparks in the forest. And we've still got five more wildlife greats to go, including a giant. Any animal called giant is bound to intrigue, and the giant otter doesn't disappoint. Playful, charming, and inquisitive, up to eight feet or two and a half meters long, this is one of the Amazon's great characters. This otter has an extremely distinctive head, broad and robust, as it periscopes on top of a thick, muscly neck. Giant otters are sociable animals. They're usually seen in groups of up to nine. You can distinguish individuals by the white patterns on their throats. In a typical family, you'll find a breeding pair and their sub-adult and junior cubs. Sometimes these groups are joined by a wandering adult that's old enough to leave its own family. Enormous whiskers are standard issue. They help the otter navigate the cloudy waters when hunting for prey. When it dives, the otter closes up both ears and nostrils to stop water entering. Giant otters are also known as river wolves. One look at their teeth leaves you in no doubt this is an impressive predator. Piranhas don't look so scary when they're stuck in the jaws of this beast. If you happen to spot this otter on land, you'll see a cumbersome, heavy animal. The legs are too short for a graceful gait. This otter has taken aquatic adaption to the extreme. The webs of its feet stretch nearly the entire length of its toes, which are tipped by sharp claws to grasp a slippery catch. Although they cope well in cloudy water, clearer lake water obviously makes hunting less hit and miss. They seem to use the rivers to travel from one lake to the next. So although they are called river wolves, lake wolves might be more appropriate. Despite being so at home in the water, otters need resting up points to dry out and sleep. They keep the vegetation clear in these areas and regularly scent mark them. They also use dens to raise their cubs. If you want to see otters, dens are the best places to spot them. But they're also a dead giveaway to poachers. That's why this species is high on the endangered list. A female gives birth to two or three cubs that come out of the den after several weeks.
Cubs are naturally inquisitive, but they need to be careful. Den sites attract trouble. But if trouble's nearby, the cubs have a giant on their side. Next on Wildlife Greats, they're creepy, they're crawly, and they make a great snack for the biggest snout in the forest. Every forest trail, every branch, every leaf is a walkway for the Amazon's countless ants. So no wonder there are ant eaters here. This is the Tamandua, or collared anteater. Why the long face? Well, check out that tongue. At full reach, it can be nearly 16 inches or 40 centimeters long. This is a cousin of the better known giant anteater. Unlike the Tamandua, the giant anteater is a ground dweller and is too large to climb trees. Instead, it combs the grassland for carpenter ants. The tail is a massive brush that helps shade it while it sleeps. The tamandua's tail is even more useful. It acts as a stabilizer and anchors it when it climbs. Rotten trees are favorite hunting grounds where there are plenty of ants. The oversized claws help it break into nests and the pointed snout roots out the prey. The Tamandua's jaws are fused together and its mouth is no wider than a pencil. But that's easily big enough for ants, bees, and the occasional lick of honey. Baby tamanduas often start out a different color from the adults. Hitching a ride on their mother's back is the best place to learn the tricks of the trade. The mother sometimes parks them on a tree while she's busy. Once the baby finds its feet, it starts to follow its nose. Like the giant anteater, the Tamandua's eyes are small, suggesting poor eyesight. There's a third Amazon anteater whose eyes are bigger for its head because it comes out at night. The squirrel-sized silky anteater looks like a novelty teddy bear with synthetic fur. It too has oversized claws that make groundwalking difficult. This animal is clearly built for the trees. It shares a wraparound tail with a tamandua and has special back feet. A joint in the sole allows a claws to be folded back for extra grip. Claws are the tamandua's first line of defense. They rear up and slash their attacker. If that doesn't work, they'll try to crush their assailant with a powerful bear hug. They also have a skunk-like trick. This Amazon oddity produces a foul odor from its anal gland. No wonder it's sometimes called the stinker of the forest. But it's no stinker to us. Unusual, exotic, and mysterious, and let's face it, that ridiculously long tongue. It's definitely way up there in the hall of wildlife greats. Tempted to visit the Amazon? Here are five things you need to take. Waterproofs. They don't call it a rainforest for nothing. A nature guide for when you take an interest in nature, and nature takes an interest in you. Binoculars. Don't be left squinting. A pair of these are vital to get really close to wildlife. A hat, useful whatever the weather. And lastly, a hammock, so you can put your feet up. 
Hear them hooting, hear them howling, and watch them monkeying around. It's the Amazon's acrobats. Remember this little guy? He's the squirrel monkey. He's the size of a marmoset, but belongs to a family of much bigger primates. The capuchin-like monkeys. From cartoon-style primates that swing from their tails to extraordinary faces in the forest, monkeys are always near the top of the wildlife tourist's wish list. They're icons of the Amazon rainforest. Many of them with that classic New World monkey tail from which they dangle. The woolly monkey is one of the biggest in the Amazon and is a star in this group. Despite its size, it's extremely agile and the tail acts as a fifth limb. The tip is naked on the inside for a strong precision grip and the well-developed thumbs and toes help anchor it to the tree. This monkey doesn't like to swing but prefers to drop down vertically from branch to branch. When your mom's so mobile, you need to be an expert clinger on. Thick fur helps. There are always plenty of handholds. Take a woolly monkey, stretch it, and you get a spider monkey. It has the same naked tip to its tail, but the hands are more hook-shaped and the thumbs reduced to stumps. This animal is a swinger. Its shoulder joints are extremely flexible and its big toes grip thinner branches to help it move safely and with speed. Many of these capuchin-like monkeys are great gardeners without knowing it. When monkeys strip fruit from a tree, it looks like a scene of devastation below but many seeds pass through their bodies unharmed. While insects savor the monkey dung, the seeds get planted in their favorite compost. Of all the capuchin-like monkeys, it's the capuchins themselves that are thought to be the smartest. They're real opportunists and keen hunters. This kawadi smells danger. She must move her babies before the capuchins find her nest. She gets the first baby to the forest floor where it can find cover. But the marauders are canny. While she's away, they steal one of the pups left behind. She's been outwitted and outnumbered. Hiding in the shadows, at least one baby has managed to survive the ordeal and will soon be reunited with mom. There are 30 different species of capuchin-like monkeys in the Amazon. This is the most bizarre form, the wakari. Their bald foreheads and sunburned faces led the locals to call them English monkeys because of their similarity to the gin-swigging British. It's a striking, if strange, beast and one more reason to put monkeys on our most wanted list. Next, take a deep breath in for the mother of all constrictors, but make sure you can breathe out again.
Even if you don't have phobias, the name anaconda spells fear. But fear is often matched by fascination. That's why this awesome beast is our penultimate wildlife great. Only Asia's reticulated python grows longer than this monster, but there's no doubting which is bigger. Most wild snakes are skinny, but the anaconda doesn't need to be so lithe. Its weight is supported by the water, so it's as thick as a large thigh. On land, it has real trouble marching on its belly. It inches forward, mocked by the passing bird life. But as it slides into the water, its true colors are revealed. This is a graceful and awesome predator. Rats are small, but they're dispatched in the same way as larger prey. First the strike. Then the anaconda throws its coils around the rat's body, squeezing the air from its lungs. Snacks like these don't show the anaconda's full potential. It barely has to yawn to swallow a rat. A sharp-toothed caiman is a bigger deal. But they spend much of their day lazing in the water, making them sitting ducks for a stealthy attack. Now the anaconda has a firm grip. The caiman's teeth are useless. It slips down nicely. So what's the biggest thing this giant snake can swallow? Could it swallow a human? It all depends on shoulder size. If an anaconda can get its jaws past the shoulders, it's home and dry. This means that the biggest anaconda at 12 feet or four meters long could swallow a small adult. But researchers, even small ones, find they only attack if really harassed. Not that you'd want to test the theory. Where the biggest snake in the world is concerned, we suggest you keep a respectful distance. We're fast approaching our 10th and final animal, the cream of all the Amazon's wildlife greats. But before we reveal who steals the crown, let's recap on the nine animals we've seen so far. There are the feisty marmosets with full-on family appeal. The spider-snatching water launcher, the Aruana. Hanging tight and doing swimmingly, the sloth. Amazon's bizarre river dolphin, the cheeky beaky, Butu. The perfect sight for sore eyes, magnificent macaws. Giant otters, you could easily lose your heart to these, but don't lose your head. The Tamandua and its ant-eating antics. Swinging for a living, Capuchin and Co, the Amazon's monkeys. And penultimate to our 10 stars, the anaconda. What Amazon animal could you possibly squeeze more excitement out of? Cream of the crop has to be the jaguar. No wonder this graceful beast name was taken for a sports car. Power, beauty, and strength are embodied in its graceful curves. It oozes big cat independent spirit and charismatic charm. It's the Amazon animal with the wow factor. But just like any number one celebrity, this jungle star comes with exclusivity. Only the very luckiest tourists get a glimpse, often 
at the water's edge. Unusually for a cat, the jaguar likes water. Fish and terrapins make an interesting catch. The jaguar has powerful jaw muscles and a larger head for its size than other big cats. One reason may be to break into the Amazon's tough-shelled animals. The jaguar sheds its tough image at mating time. They groom, lick and paw just like domestic cats. The timing of mating seems to be geared to the changing seasons. Pregnancy lasts three and a half months, so this female's young should be born in the rainy season, when there's more food for her to catch. Cubs start to emerge from the den at two weeks, and soon the hunting instinct kicks in. This cub is still too little to know what to do with a snake, but when he grows up, no other predator in the Amazon will match him for size. The jaguar may be the Amazon's only official big cat, but it's not the only feline in the forest. The ocelot looks like a miniature version, but is less robust with a more delicate head. The margay is smaller still. And like the ocelot, is an excellent climber and nighttime hunter. The jaguarundi is similar in size to the margay, but it's easy to identify. This is the only one of these cats without spots. And it would certainly turn tail if a jaguar came around the corner. Sometimes people confuse jaguars with leopards. So how do you tell the difference between the two big spotted cats? Look closely at the markings. The jaguar's rosettes have spots, the leopards don't. Myths and the jaguar seem to go hand in hand. The Maya and the Aztecs worship them as gods, and many Amazonians today see them as the spirits of the forest. The Matisse take this to the extreme. Every day they prepare their jaguar facial adornments and proudly display their cat-like tattoos. Like the jaguar, they stalk through the forest to hunt prey. Instead of claws, they use poison to attack. The name jaguar comes from a native Indian word, meaning the killer that takes its prey in a single bound. The Matisse hunter can be just as deadly. The jaguar. What other cat is the inspiration for a whole tribe of people? It's the Amazon's biggest cat and our biggest star in the biggest rainforest on Earth. It easily tops the bill, king of the Amazonian jungle. And what a jungle! The vibrant home to our wildlife greats, our favorites in a cast list so huge, there are many creatures yet to be revealed. With vast tracts of Amazonia still unexplored, who knows what you might discover when you visit.